Good morning, this is Ryan De La Garza, and I'm going to be going through a Desmos demo here, looking at an activity I got from uh, the Facebook group from Chelsea Kovac. Sorry, Chelsea, I hope I said that right. Um, but she was having problems. She was trying to have um, her activity check an ordered pair that students were entering and see if it was correct. And we were running into some issues because of the way that we were checking it. So let me show you what we were doing. So we have a couple transformations going on. So the first one, we're doing a 90 uh, degrees clockwise rotation. So we come in here and let's go ahead and put this in. Um, here we go. So if we notice, look, we get the check mark. It's all good. The tricky part is about what we're doing here is the way it's set up is it's checking the actual text. So it's it's instead of running an equation or anything, it's saying, did you type in? It's doing a text match. Um, the problem with that is that if I have a student, if they put a space, all of a sudden it's wrong because it doesn't match exactly. If I put a space right here, all of a sudden it's wrong because it's not matching exactly. So doing these kind of LaTeX checks where we're, we're, text, we're checking the, the math type that's in there gets tricky because it has to be exact. Case sensitive, spaces, punctuation, the littlest thing can throw it off. So what I came in and did is we used uh, the function parse ordered pair to pull apart that ordered pair and check those numbers individually. So we're really focusing on the numbers. Now, the downside, if you compare this screen, so this is the one that I adjusted and this is uh, Chelsea's original screen. So here she had the point labels going in. Um, so those came out. Uh, because we want to check the numbers, but I did add to the top the triangle, um, you know, DBN prime and DBN double prime. So we're kind of still making that connection, which I personally feel like is okay. Uh, it's having students now, as you're doing this triangle DBN, you're really having to come back and think about the rule up here. So we're still kind of there, but I get it would be nice to have it kind of right in there labeled. Um, so now if we check it this way, right, if I do two, one, two, three, and one, three, right? I get my check, but now look, spaces doesn't bother it um, because it's pulling apart those ordered pairs. So let's dive into the code. What does this actually look like? Um, so if we come into the computation layer, uh, if we look up here in this section, this is where everything's going on. So this is our parse ordered pair um, function. So let me zoom in here. So what we can see and what we're doing with each one is I'm setting this to a point. So I'm setting this is point D1. And what I want the computation layer to do is I want it to parse the ordered pair. So what parsing is, is we take something and we separate it into pieces. Um, so we're taking this ordered pair that's in there and I'm separating it into an X and a Y. So when I come down here for my conditional statements, what I'm doing is when I say, okay, point D1, so I'm naming it point D1 up top. When point D1, when the X value is two, and point D1 when the Y value is one. So for each of these, I'm looking at that point and I'm separating out and saying, all right, when the X value is this and the Y value is this. So it doesn't matter, space, all that kind of stuff. It's okay because it's like looking, is the X value match what I want it to be? Does the Y value match what I want it to be? And if that's true, then we're good to go and we make it from there. Um, one other piece that I added into hers as well is when the check actually appears. So here it's going to stay blank when that last row, row three, column two, um, is blank, or if three, two has focus, which means that if I'm typing in there still, um, it'll stay blank. So it's not until the very end that they see if they got it correct or incorrect. So that was one other small change um, that I made from um, her original coding. So that's essentially what we did for the, the parse order pair. We ran that for both columns, column one and column two, and that's the change. So now we're checking the actual coordinates instead of the, the, the string of text. And that's just an, a, a more stable way of making checks right there. So quick adjustment, um, but a good thing to do if ever you want to check points and things like that using that parse ordered pair. Uh, and then you can call up the X. So one more time, just to kind of uh, go through exactly. So one more time right here, um, I'm taking and I'm naming the point D1 and I'm parsing this cell content. So the table is my this. So I'm taking this table cell content from row one, column two, and I'm parsing that 
ordered pair out into two quantities. And then when I call that up, I'm saying I want point D1 uh, dot X. So it's X coordinate. So you do the, the name dot X or the name dot Y. And that's how I can use that. I can use that in graphs. I can use that in tables if I wanted to pull that and do different things. Um, so there's lots of different uses for the parse ordered pair function. So that's basically what we're looking at. If you have any other questions, please let me know. Uh, and thanks for watching and happy Desmosing.